So next, how do we set up Kubernetes? The best answer, the easiest way, is to get somebody else to do it for us. <laughs> and, uh, and and I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious about this. Um, uh, first, how did we obtain like these clusters? Uh, so we use kubedm. Kubedm is one of the many ways to get a cluster up and running. Um, to, so, so what we did is that we took a bunch of VMs, uh, using Ubuntu LTS, um, just because I'm, I'm like a Debian person and Ubuntu is Debian, but with an LTS support cycle. So that works great for me. Um, then we installed Docker. Then we installed the Kubernetes packages. So it's just a bunch of apt-get install. And then we use kubedm to set up the cluster. With kubedm, uh, we use kubedm init on the first node. So it's going to do a bunch of things. It's going to uh, uh, generate a CA certificates and, and provision etcd CD and all the control plane components. Um, and then we get basically a one node cluster. Next, uh, we set up the networking which uh, in that case, since we're using weave, it's just like one command. Uh, we do like one kubectl command and it's going to automatically take care of everything. And then we use kubedm join on the remaining nodes. And that's it. Um, so kubedm is one of the easiest way to set up a cluster. Um, but it still requires some extra work. Like you need to set up the container engine. You need to set up the network. And it doesn't support uh, highly available control planes yet. There is like the, it, there is the beginning of some support for highly available control planes. Uh, but then the instructions become way more complicated. Eventually it will get there. Um, <clears throat> so other options. Uh, I said earlier, yeah, that the easiest way is to get somebody else to do it for you. And uh, very often that means using a managed Kubernetes option. If you're using any of the major cloud providers, um, whether it's Azure or Google Cloud or AWS or even DigitalOcean, for instance, all of these have managed Kubernetes offerings. These managed Kubernetes offerings are great for many, many, many use cases and scenarios. Um, sometimes this will not work for you because you need to customize things like really deeply. Uh, and in that case, you will need to do things yourself. So then you have a few options. Uh, there is something called Keops, uh, which helps to set up um, uh, highly available Kubernetes on AWS and DigitalOcean, for instance. Uh, and then that gives you a little bit more control because instead of just being this black box and you, you create your cluster and, and you just get like this API server and, and you can't customize much, with Keops, uh, it's going to use uh, constructs like auto scaling groups. It's going to put some config. Uh, I can't remember if it's in Dynamo or in the S3 bucket, but it's going to use some constructs available on the, on the cloud infrastructure that you use, uh, so that you can deploy your highly available cluster. Um, so that's if you are in the cloud. Uh, if you just want something like locally uh, to 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 work in in development. You can use Minikube or Docker Desktop, so that includes Docker for Mac, Docker for Windows. These are really easy to set up, and it gives you a one-node local cluster. Great for development. If you want a, a local multi-node cluster, and you are on Linux, and you are at ease with systemd, you can use something called KubeSpawn, which is going to use like systemd machine containers to, to give you a, a multi-node local cluster. Um, now, uh, if you, if you already have a strong investment in some config management system, um, there will be some option out there to help you deploy Kubernetes. For instance, there is KubeSpray if you are using Ansible. If you are using Terraform, you can use Typhoon. If you have a strong investment in Puppet, you can use Tarmac, etc., etc., etc. Now, if you want to deploy, um, kind of from scratch, and you are the kind of person who wants to know how everything works, like component, one component after the next, um, then you want to look at Kubernetes the hard way. Uh, it's a tutorial uh, by Casey Hightower that explains how you set up Kubernetes, but like from, um, really like from scratch. So you will learn how to set up 
a certificate authority, how to generate key pairs and how to sign them and what needs to go where and how to set up a multi-node ETCD, uh, etc., etc. Um, honestly, we, we could easily spend a couple of days just going through all that and learning all these components, which is why in this chapter I'm just covering the available options, but we're not doing any labs on that because it, it's not it be super relevant. Um, you also have lots of commercial options, uh, so commercial distributions of Kubernetes. Um, there is Tectonic uh, by CoreOS and Red Hat. Uh, there is Docker Enterprise Edition that also, that, that also supports um, Kubernetes. Um, there are a bunch of others. Uh, so depending on where you want to deploy and what your requirements are, uh, you, you would want to pick a different option.